At the start we find ourselves in present-day Japan, on the rooftop of a hospital building where an old man is swinging his walking stick towards the air. The nurse who is there with him scolds him for it, but he insists to keep going, as he is casting a spell to open a gate to another world. Without any further explanation the scene shifts to a high school basketball game, and it is there we are introduced to the main characters. They are an athletic high schooler named Haru, and his friend Yu. Yu however also has a major disability as he is bound to a wheelchair, being unable to walk. So where Haru excels at sports, Yu excels at academics. Returning home from school, the two are joined by classmate named Katona. It is evident that both of them have feelings for her, but it is Haru who is in a relationship with her. Sometime after splitting, Yu is called on his phone by Katona, asking him for help as she is being followed by someone. Yu quickly asks his sister Saki to give him a ride, so they can quickly find Katona while also trying to reach Haru to come help them. By the time Yu gets to her, Katona is being stabbed by a hooded figure who runs off, after Yu attempts to ram him with the wheelchair. Haru arrives just moments later and picks up Katona who seems to be in a very bad shape, as the dagger is stuck deep in her abdomen. Haru and Yu argue what to do, and Haru grabs Katona, wanting to carry her to a hospital. As incoming traffic is about to hit them, the world around them suddenly flashes and they find themselves in a completely different place, wearing different clothes and surrounded by fantasy-like creatures. The camera zooms out so we can see the whole fantasy city, which appears to be about medieval age by development. It takes them a moment to realize that the fatally wounded Katona is not with them, and that you can suddenly use his legs and walk. The pair decides to go look for Katona, and their first stop is a tavern where they see a poster depicting the Princess Astrid. She looks just like Katona. With that information they travel to the palace so they could meet her. As they reach the castle, they decide to sneak in hidden in a wagon that is being led through the gates. Meanwhile we are shown inside of the palace, as the king and his most trusted subjects discuss the condition of the princess. It turns out she has a powerful curse placed onto her and they are looking for ways to eliminate it. It is noted that even the kingdom's magic minister Nas is unable to remove the curse. He says that the squad that eliminates curses will be arriving shortly, and they should eliminate the curse. Jumping back to our protagonists, we can see that they have snuck in, successfully reaching the princess chambers. They stay hidden in a cargo that is taken to princess's chambers, noticing that the princess does indeed look just like Katona. The curse squad's ritual goes wrong, and they get killed in the process, but does enough to reveal that the curse is in fact some sort of dagger stuck into her at the same location where Katona was stabbed. Once the room clears of other people, Haru and Yu approach the princess. Yu then grabs the dagger and pulls it out. The commotion alerts the guards, and they are quickly subdued and brought before the king for questioning. While they explain that they came looking for their friend and Yu just pulled out the cursed dagger, the king's men are not willing to believe them. Then the princess herself comes in, showing everyone that she is feeling better again. After exchanging some words with the princess, the boys realize she isn't the Katona they know, and they are sent back to the city. Returning to the town they get lodgings back at the same tavern they visited before. While Haru is convinced this is all a dream and takes things easy, Yu has no peace and returns back to the palace. While sneaking to check on the princess, Yu is caught by her and they end up talking about random things. Joining her on a flying ship, Yu ventures with Astrid to a lake where she performs a cleansing ritual said to banish evil spirits. They talk about Katona, discussing the similarities and differences between Astrid and her. Back at the palace Na suggests that Yu and Haru might be assassins from the Black Banner sent to kill the king. By his suggestion on the next day the two heroes are invited to the arena for an exhibition match against some gladiators. It is quickly evident that the gladiators are not going to pull any punches, and the two are forced into a hard sword fight. It turns out the two are naturals with the blade and put up quite a spectacle for the audience. The battle ends and they are called up to the king so they could be rewarded. As they approach the king's guards point their weapons at them, and they are accused of being assassins sent by the Black Banner. Yu figures that they might escape from the situation if they shift back to their world. He states that the reason they managed to do so last time, is because they were about to be killed by traffic, so imminent danger must be a trigger. 
Following Yu's call, the two rush towards a burning brazier and jump over the flames, falling out of the arena and towards the ground below. That stunt sends them back to their world. They see Katona who is perfectly fine, and has no clue about being stabbed the day before. They hear from her about a traffic accident where three people died, and looking it up you notices those resemble the ones who tried to dispel the curse from the princess in the other world, but were destroyed by the curse instead. We see a memory of you when he was a five-year-old boy in a hospital. The same old man from the beginning of the movie is waving his walking stick around towards the sky. He talks to you about the other world and those chosen to be able to travel between the two worlds. The man also mentions a harsh rule that there are people whose lives are linked between the two worlds, and those who have linked lives tend to have similar appearance and personality. You deduce is that the reason why Katona is fine now is because she is linked to Astrid, and since they saved Astrid by removing the curse, Katona was saved too. Haru on the other hand doesn't believe any of that and is convinced they were both just dreaming. The next day Katona reveals that she had a malignant tumor discovered, and she had three months left to live. You suggest they go back to the other world to make sure that Astrid is safe, as that would in kind save Katona. However Haru comes to a different conclusion, believing that because they saved Astrid, Katona is now meant to die, so he wants to go to the other world to kill the princess. The two friends argue and as they are grabbing each other the masked figure who attacked Katona runs from behind them and grabs Haru, making sure to bring him to a different place as they are spirited to the other world. Haru finds himself in the Black Castle, the headquarters of the Black Banner, where he meets Gailroth, their leader. Gailroth reinforces Haru's belief and puts him in charge of leading his troops to battle and killing the princess in her palace, thereby saving Katona back in his world. Yu is back at the palace, where he is accused of being an assassin and subdued by the guards. He pleads with the king, explaining how Katona and Astrid have their lives linked, and since Katona is predicted to die soon, Astrid must be in danger as well. While he is pleading with the king, a report comes in that the Black Banner army is attacking them, and that Haru is leading the charge. Yu is given an option to serve as Astrid's personal guard and defend her by killing Haru. Given the situation Yu accepts and prepares for battle. Standing on the walls by himself, Yu is approached by Astrid and she offers her life to him, giving him a special dagger which can take her life without her protective magic causing harm back to the attacker. Stating that if her death would save his beloved in the other world and make him no longer be at odds with Haru, she would gladly die. However Yu refuses to take her life and promises he will save both her and Katona, asking Astrid to believe in him. The battle begins and the Dark Banner army quickly destroys the walls around the city, progressing with an unexpected speed. We see Haru in the Black Banner armor which is enhancing his strength so he is easily dispatching anyone who gets in his way. Inside the palace Astrid is asking of the king to use Mornstar, a legendary sword of overwhelming power. Unfortunately it is revealed that Mornstar disappeared after its powers were abused in the past war and the one they have on display is a fake. Before long the invading army makes its way to the palace gates and this is where Haru and you clash. Knight Commander Bertha who resembles Yu's sister, Saki, is captured by the Black Banner soldiers. As Haru and Yu are about to deliver fatal blows to each other, their ability to travel to the other world in face of imminent danger triggers and they are both back in their world and out of the battlefield. Yu has a flashback to the time he met Haru, saving him from a wild dog and how they became friends from that point on. Out of the flashback and back at the hospital where Katona is being treated, Haru and Yu meet and talk about what is going on. Yu is not giving up and tries to explain again to Haru how linked lives work. To prove his point, he remembers that Bertha was captured by the enemy, so Saki should be in danger as well. True enough as they arrive back to Yu's place, the hooded person who stabbed Katona is there, attacking Saki. They distract the hooded individual and get in Saki's car, running away from the person as it transforms into a spider-like creature and gives chase. Saki mentions how that weird creature was addressing her in the same manner as Yu is, and it creeped her out, to which Yu seems to figure something out. As they somehow manage to shake off the spider, Saki drives off of the edge of the road and into a river, triggering another transportation to the other world for Yu and Haru. Both of them are back in the palace and they rush to where the king is. Yu accuses Nas of being a traitor, 
explaining how he has the same scent as the cursed dagger that he pulled out of the princess. Astrid confirms that magic does indeed have a unique scent, and that he should have the identical curse wound on him that he inflicted upon her, because of her Aegis spell. In order to prove if he is innocent she demands that he shows them his chest. Seeing that the charade is up, Nos laughs and reveals the curse-ridden torso while switching to his battle armor, introducing himself as Gaelroth, the leader of the Black Banner. Proclaiming that he desires to take Astrid's life in order to increase the potency of his magic, and claim what is rightfully his. Apparently he is the believed to be deceased older brother of the current king. Gale Roth takes control of Haru and makes him fight you, while he goes for the princess. You breaks Haru free from the mind control, but is not able to stop Gale Roth from getting Astrid. To stop Astrid from casting harmful spell, Gaelroth blasts away a castle wall and makes rubble fall down onto her. Yu is faster though and manages to cover her with his body, protecting her from harm while getting impaled by a broken off piece of debris. Yu seems to be fatally wounded which incites Haru and Astrid to go fight for him. The two of them prove to be no challenge to Gaelroth, and he overpowers them with ease. Meanwhile we see the old man with the walking cane from the beginning of the movie walking up to Yu. The old man entrusts the walking cane to you, telling him that only a chosen hero is able to wield it. Yu takes the cane and it glows with magic power as the old man transports himself back to the other world. Gale Roth decides to end Haru and Astrid, transforming himself into a large monstrosity. Gale Roth grabs Astrid and wants to end Haru, but Yu uses his cane to stop his attack. The cane responds to Yu's heroic action and transforms into the fabled sword Mornstern. With the power of Mornstern, Yu is able to cut down Gaelroth and save Astrid from his grasp. Unfortunately Gaelroth is able to heal his injuries almost instantly. As Yu is overpowered he manages to sneakily pass the sword to Haru who comes in and delivers a death blow to Gaelroth while his guard is down. Mornstern and Gaelroth are both destroyed in the aftermath and a portal is opened that links back to the other world. Astrid explains that Yu and Haru were able to travel between the two worlds because of the sword's powers. With the sword destroyed, this is most likely the final chance to get back. Haru and Yu enter the portal, but as they travel to the other side, Yu pushes Haru ahead and turns back, bidding farewell to his friend and returning to Astrid. Haru wakes up in a hospital bed in this world, it has been a month since the car fell into the river and he was unconscious all the while. In the meanwhile Katona had surgery and the tumor has been successfully removed. Haru asks about you, and he is surprised to learn that everyone else has forgotten about him. Returning to the place they first met he comes to the realization that you was from the beginning a resident of the other world. We see one final scene with you being crowned prince next to Astrid, presumably due to them getting married. Hey, thank you for staying all the way till the end. If you enjoyed the video give it a like. It takes only a second but it means everything to us. Have a great day and see you in the next video.